Hi, this is Edison Abelard, and in this video, we're going to discuss how to create CSS sprite sheets using Texture Packer. If you haven't done so already, you should visit the Texture Packer website. Well, you'll notice there's two versions of the application. You have the free essential version and the pro version. Uh, you can go through the website and check out all the features and see the difference between the two and choose which one you want to get. I've already gone ahead and picked up the pro version, installed it, and ready to go. So now this is literally going to take probably four to five steps to actually complete. So it's a really fast process. We're going to start by adding sprites. I've already downloaded these icons off the web. Um, I'll actually leave this one out for now and come back to it. Click open. Now, now there's two things you'll notice. On the right hand side is all of our sprites, which are file name plus extension. And every time I click on one, you'll notice that there's this little marquee around it. And I can also click within this area to get that marquee as well, which highlights my um, current icon or sprite. You'll notice that this center one is turned sideways. Now, we know that this is supposed to be vertical and not turned on its side. So what we'll do is, is actually come here and uncheck Allow Rotation. And what that will do is, is just put everything back in its original axis. Now, for our purposes, we're going to come down here and change this to CSS, which will actually disable a lot of rotation. But if you're using another format then, and you don't want any rotations, you should definitely do that. We won't see too much of a difference here, but you can also use this crop tool and it'll get rid of any unnecessary space inside of uh, your little stage area here. Now we go ahead and we're going to save out a texture file. I'm saving the texture file within the images folder of our project. Um, just for now, definitely if you're pushing this to the web, you should A, never put files that are source files. And when I say source files, I mean PSDs, um, AI files or anything like that in a public directory you should definitely separate it out so no one can download them or have the potential to download them. So what's up? TP Sprite. Oops. So we'll save that. And you see it automatically creates <clears throat> a CSS file. We'll actually change this and put this in the CSS folder. I'll save that. Okay, perfect. So now that we've done that, we hit publish. And that's it. Now I'm going to open up our project up in Aptana. Refresh it. Make sure everything is there. And you'll notice that we have our sprite sheet. And our TP sprite that has our full um, list of sprites. So now what we'll do is, is we'll just duplicate this, get our file name. In this case, now there's a double extension here. You can go ahead and delete it. Preview. Okay. So we'll add that here. Now we'll let's look at this file. First thing we're going to do is, is actually change where this URL is pointing. It's actually pointing in the wrong directory. It's expecting it here. So all we're going to do is, is go up one, go into images, slash, and then our sprite. Texture Packer has gone ahead and created this, this sprite sheet for us. And the way we'll use it is, is literally create a class tag, add the sprite, as well as one of these elements. So we'll go ahead into our index.html. We'll add sprite and let's say adjust. Actually, don't even know what it's called. CSS sprite, save. Empty trash first. Put down empty trash, test it out. And as you can see, it's that simple. Now you have your empty trash. Now we'll go back in 
And we'll do the same thing for all the other ones. Just gonna copy and paste. And just the same thing, go ahead and just drop these in here. Change the names. Now, prior to using Texture Packer, the way you would create CSS sprite sheets would be to actually go ahead and export your image the same way we did, maybe in Photoshop or Fireworks. Then you'd have to actually write out all this code, which Texture Packer does a great job of knowing where all the elements are and automatically putting them and aligning them. Otherwise, you would actually be in here maybe for hours adding all of these different sprites checking the width, the height, making sure that the X and Y's are all correct. Okay, looks like we have one extra. Now we'll go back in there again, hit play, and you'll see we have all of our icons. Now we're going to take this one step further and make one little change. And that's with, you'll notice that we have our empty trash can and our full trash can. Well, what I'm going to do is, is add one more sprite. So this is our sprite sheet. And it's this hover. Now, this is a very great technique. As you can see, we have really one icon. One should be a hover. One should be its down state, maybe. So what we'll actually do is, is by, ex by adding this dash hover, Texture Packer will already know to create a hover state for that specific image. Now the images have to actually have the same name. So you'll see here, empty underscore trash 48 by 48. Empty underscore trash 48 by 48 dash hover. So we'll add this. And you'll notice right away we get this stacked. And all that means is, is there's going to be a hover effect for this icon. So now we'll go ahead See if I can get rid of that. Go into Texture Packer. No Texture Packer. We'll go into Antenna. Just copy this because this is actually going to be overwritten. And same thing. Just hit Save so we can save it. Hit Publish. Now we'll go back into Antenna. Close this down. Oh, of course, it creates another one. Let me delete my original one. Okay, perfect. So we'll just copy this back in here. And now you see there's one change. And that now we have the empty trash with a hover already added for us. I'm actually going to go ahead and add one more. And that's going to be cursor. We'll set it to pointer. And all that does is simulate a button. So we'll do that for, for all of our elements. In a later video, I'll actually show you how to create a CSS without having to repeat uh, a simple step like this because there is a shortcut to doing it, so you don't have to continually do it over and over. We'll save it, close it out, just rename it, get rid of that extra extension. Hit OK. Now we'll just, now you can see anytime we hover over it, one will have the cursor, the hand cursor, and that goes across for all of them. But you'll also see that the, the actual icon changes. Now what you'll also notice is there's a slight shift. As you can see, just a slight shift. And the way we'll get rid of that is, is we'll come back in here. Hopefully this will save it correct. We'll come back in here. And what we'll take out is this crop. Now with crop removed, this should work out perfect. We'll publish again, go back to Aptana, update, great. You'll see our hover is still here. Oh, great, we'll just images, 
dot images. And I'll just add cursor pointer to just these first two elements. Everything is straight. Come back in here, refresh, and now you'll notice it doesn't jump. So if you do see that jumping, you'll know that all you have to do is go ahead and uncheck this cropping and it should work fine. Now there are other options in here that we'll go over in a later video, but you can add padding if you need it, uh, inner, outer, shape padding, um, extrude, and threshold, which we'll, we'll go over in a later video.